This video is about the Great Smog of London, that happened in 1952, the causes of this smog, and the effects on the health of the population, environment, and legislation. The Great Smog of London happened in December 1952. It started on December 5th and ended on December 9th, when it dispersed due to climate change. It was the worst air pollution event in the history of the United Kingdom, but, the City of London, had problems with poor air quality since the 13th century. Initially, the cause of the air pollution problems was the burning of coal, and, the expansion of the city, worsened the situation. In the 1600s, there were increasing complaints about pollution, and, King James I, approved legislation to restrict the burning of coal. But it was ineffective. In the late 1700s, with the beginning of industrialization, conditions began to deteriorate further and, in the 19th century, air pollution increased even more. The occurrence of thick fogs, that characterizes the London climate, also increased in the city. But what caused the Great Smog of London? A combination of factors. The smog was very severe due to weather and pollution. Very cold weather caused people to use more coal for heating. The post-war domestic coal was of poorer quality, so there was an increase in the amount of sulfur dioxide released into the atmosphere. Different pollutants were emitted during the smog. Sulfur dioxide, which may be converted to sulfuric acid, fluorine compounds, smoke particles, hydrochloric acid. Pollution originated from vehicles, diesel-fueled buses, industries, and coal-fired power stations also contributed to the air pollution in the city. An anti-cyclone that was formed in London on 4 December 1952 contributed to weather conditions. So there was a region of high pressure in the city, with a descending air mass. It suppressed the upward movements necessary for the formation of clouds and precipitation. The anticyclone effects are the driest and coldest air, few or no clouds present, and absence of rain. A thermal inversion also contributed to the smog. The city was windless and a thermal inversion occurred with cold and stagnant air trapped under a layer of warm air. As the city had no wind there was no dispersion of pollutants and the accumulation of pollutants occurred. Windless conditions, the presence of airborne pollutants originated from the use of coal contributed to forming a thick layer of smog over the city. During the smog, visibility was so poor that many people abandoned their cars on the street. Many people had to walk to the hospital due to the difficulties of the ambulance service. Street crime increased. There was an increase in hospitalizations due to pneumonia and bronchitis. The number of deaths also increased. The pollutants emitted during the smog can cause many health problems. Sulfur dioxide can irritate the respiratory tract and increase the risk of tract infections. It can be responsible for mucus secretion, coughing, and aggravates chronic bronchitis and asthma. Fluorine exposure can originate nasal and eye irritation and an increased incidence of chronic irritative respiratory diseases, especially for chronic bronchitis. Hydrochloric gas inhalation or acid droplets can cause damage to the airways, irritation and, even, destruction of the pulmonary epithelium, and death. More than 4,000 people are believed to have died immediately after the smog, and, after a few weeks and months, more than 8,000 deaths happened. The Great Smog had effects on government regulation and environmental research. As a consequence of the smog, the British government passed the Clean Air Act in 1956 in the Parliament of the United Kingdom, which was an important moment in the history of environmentalism. This act had many measures to reduce pollution. It restricted the burning of coal and established smoke-free areas in the city. People received subsidies to switch to different sources of heating, that could be natural gas, oil, and electricity. Even with the new law, another smog occurred in London in 1962.
But the Clean Air Act is considered of great importance for the environment and public health. Do you have problems with air pollution in your city? Does it affect the health of the population? Have you ever seen a thermal inversion? If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe, so we can make more videos like this for you.